Thanks, Richo. Uh, good morning, and again, thanks a big thanks to everyone for being here today. As Richo said, we're really excited to launch the ninth edition of the WEMA uh, Women's Big Bash League, which I'm confident in saying will be the biggest in the competition's history. Since last season, we've made some big moves. We've worked closely with our clubs and broadcasters on a revamped schedule, with clubs playing more matches at home than ever before, and the introduction of an historic stadium series, which will see the world's best players play in the world's best stadiums. We're incredibly excited about these matches being played at the Adelaide Oval, the MCG and SCG on the 24th, 25th and 26th of November. And look forward to sharing more details around what fans can expect at these events very soon. Since last season, we've also doubled the salary cap for every team. As a result, WBBL players will be paid more than ever before with the salary cap doubling and the top players earning more than $100,000 for the season. We've also held the inaugural WBBL Overseas Player Draft, which is, has introduced a brand new level of international talent to the competition. And we've launched a new marketing campaign, this and more. And we're excited to share that with you shortly as well. As the leading cr cricket league for women in the world, the WBBL is this and more. And this season we're owning the greatness that is the WBBL. The WBBL is world-class and it's the best of the best in big stadiums and at local grounds. It's ferocious rivalries and moments together. It's superstars and role models up close. It's a thrilling day out with a family-friendly atmosphere and it all gets underway this Thursday night with the Sydney Sixers hosting the Melbourne Stars under lights at the amazing North Sydney Oval. A big thanks go to our wonderful WBBL partners, particularly Weber, Seven Network and Foxtel, who continue to play a pivotal role in making the WBBL the world's leading cricket league for women. And to our incredible players, both those that are here today and those finalising their preparations with their respective teams around the country, thank you for making this competition what it is and good luck for the season ahead. Once again, thank you, for all, all, thank you to everyone for coming and back to you, Richo, to introduce our special guests. How's that? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, something different. Um, I think, yeah, there's always a new lens of creativity to launch the season and, um, yeah, excited that we're not too far away from the start of the Big Bash. Who do you think enjoyed that? I think the cameraman really loved it, yeah. I think it really, um, really is exactly what they wanted to do with their very high-tech and expensive lenses. <laughs> I think um, first and foremost, the WBBL you know, really set the standard from a, you know, from nine years ago in terms of where we wanted to take the women's game um, in terms of professionalism and having a really strong commercially viable competition. And I think, you know, um, as an Australian cricketer, uh, we're all really, really proud of that. And the the fact that it has just produced so many like exciting moments across the last eight years and um, the fact that we've been able to also attract you know the best players in the world for a long period of time to come out and play and and probably even more importantly what it's done to our domestic talent and just how how much the game has gone forward as a result of this competition so yeah it's a, it's a really special time of year I think um, it's a really challenging time of year it's easily the hardest competition I've ever played in because of um, you know the fact that you play every team twice across 14 rounds and then there's a final series now so um, yeah it's just a great time players' salaries have doubled since last year, so some will earn over $100,000 in six weeks. What does that mean for the competition? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic advancement for the competition. I think it's probably also in line with um, the trend of, a, of the other T20 competitions in the world now. Um, if you look at the 100 and also um, the WPL, there's some really great opportunities for um, female cricketers to earn a really great amount of money um, playing in these competitions. But I also think um, with that brings a sense that we really want to make sure that this is a, a really high level of competition that brings the best players to play, but also gives our domestic players the opportunity to perform at their best. So from that perspective, it's been um, wonderful to see it grow every year. And, and no doubt this year will be probably the biggest and, and best yet. Um, the draft was really exciting addition and then the salaries and the opportunities for players is huge. So just on the draft, yeah, I think it, it's definitely had an impact on, on squads, obviously. Um, I think if you look across the board now, there's such an even spread of the best talent in the competition. Um, and it's really hard to pick a front-running team, um, on paper at least. Um, you know, some of the, the movement um, and players that have come into the comp has really evened things up. 
Uh, yeah, in my very, very biased opinion, it is. I think um, undoubtedly the international talent is a huge component to that, but I think you know, it would be really remiss not to um, actually mention and, and take note of just how strong our domestic talent is. Um, you know, there's so many good players across all the teams, um, and I think that's the real point of difference for the WBBL is just how strong um, all the squads are from you know the first player to, to the last player on the list. Um, and it makes it incredibly tough. I don't think people stand out in the way that they do maybe in other teams. Um, I think across the board, there's just always contributions from many players. I think the really obvious evolution for the WBBL is to start playing more and more fixtures at um, you know, the top stadium in the country and attracting really big crowds with that. Um, obviously we've got the stadium series this year in the last round of games. Um, I think that's a wonderful sort of marker for, for the competition to, to start testing where we can take things. Um, I think it's really important too for the evolution of of the game and for the sport. Um, obviously a lot's been made of, of the attraction um, that the Matildas garnered throughout the World Cup and what they were able to achieve from that point of view was unbelievable and probably unparalleled and, and will be really hard to match for a long period of time. But I think it's set the standard for, for all competitions um, in the country to, to make sure that we're really pushing to fill stadiums and, and have really quality grade A games. Yeah, I think it is really exciting. It's probably a return in a way um, to the early period of the WBBL where we played alongside the men's competition. There was probably some exposure to, to those stadiums, but now sort of down the track um, with the stadiums being um, used exclusively for the WBBL and fixtures there, um, yeah, it's a really nice shift and I think um, you know, there's a lot of effort and energy being put in by all the clubs and Cricket Australia um, to make sure that those those um, those events and fixtures are really successful in terms of large crowds, and I think that's great exposure for all the players involved. Certainly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Meg is obviously a huge inclusion in any game of cricket that she's available for, so um, that's awesome. And then I think you know just the the history and rivalry we have with the Stars. Um, it's great to kick off the competition at North Sydney Oval, which has been a special venue for the WBBL for many years. So um, yeah, it's a it's a really big fixture to start off, and um, I think hopefully, for, from a Sixers point of view, we start off on the right note. Well, on a personal note, we're likely to see you back bowling, perhaps the back half. Uh, yeah, hopefully even earlier than that. Um, I've bowled a couple of times now um, towards the back end of the West Indies tour at training, and that's gone really well. So touch wood, um, you know, in the next couple of weeks, so I'll be back bowling in, in matches. Just one. Um, I, I don't think so, um, not, not from an Australian context at least. Um, I think without a doubt still the greatest opportunities for players um, is playing international cricket and representing Australia. Um, you know, there, there's obviously personal considerations to take into that and at what point in your career you're at. But I think, you know, at the moment, the opportunities from um, a national team point of view are, are huge. Um, I think perhaps you know, that's probably a question for players from some other nations. And uh, it's a bit of a question that we probably, as a, as a global game, need to think about and make sure that we're still kind of got the balance right. But I think from an Australian perspective, um, you yeah, know, it still very much lies at, at the international level. When this series finishes, you're going to go to India for a multi-format series, which includes uh, a test. Yeah. So how do you juggle that? How, what does that the week look like? Do you have a red ball and white ball? Uh, yeah, it's a really cool, I think, component to the multi-format series is trying to juggle all the changes in formats. Um, We've definitely had a, a chat about it as a, as a squad in terms of managing preparation for for a test match in India not long after the WBBL finishes and I think what that looks like is probably some, some added sort of training and preparation in amongst um, the matches of the WBBL so whether that's girls bowling a little bit more before or after games um, perhaps kind of topping up from a physical capacity point of view with some extra sort of sessions but um, I think you know, in saying that the best preparation for any kind of competition is playing matches and so to be exposed to, you know, what is the toughest competition in the world from a franchise point of view is still really good prep in itself.
proud of you to have seven cameras in your face. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I think for, for every female athlete at the moment, there's been no better time to be involved um, in sport. and. The interest that um, I think any code is starting to generate, and um, the way that the, the sport's being talked about, you know, it's not just kind of high-level soft um, considerations, but like the nitty-gritty of of what's going on in any competition, what's going on with any athlete at any point in time, and decisions and form and all those kinds of things. It's been huge. So um, yeah, long may that continue, and I'm really looking forward to the future of how much that keeps growing. I was a bit embarrassed that I couldn't pop my balloon in the first two goes. Um, no, I sort of felt bad for all the camera people who got covered in the paint, but um, no, it looks cool. I think there's a couple of the logos that probably need a little bit of work. I think the stars might, might need a little bit of work over there, but um, yeah, no, it's cool. It's, it's exciting for the start of the Big Bash. How are the Renegades shaping up? Yeah, I think really nicely. I think um, coming off the back of the West Indies series, seeing the way that Haley's been playing and the form that she's in is, is really exciting for us. And, um, hopefully she can continue that for us, but um, yeah, being able to bring back a player like Harmon as well as international stage and, um, and Tammy Beaumont as well. So I think we've kept the, the core of our local players as well, which is super exciting and um, yeah, hopefully we can build on what we've built the last couple of years. Do you think you've been able to spend much to Hayley for that series and give her an idea of what the WNBL could be like? Um, oh, it was all pretty much business during the, um, the tournament. It was a couple of just walking past and saying hello. but. Um, she probably had the number on us throughout the whole tournament, so she probably did, didn't want to talk to us. But um, no, we're super pumped that, that she's going to be back. But yeah, it was it was all business during the tournament, that's for sure. Do you think she could really light up the WBL? Yeah, I think so. I think the form that she's been in the last sort of 12 months um, can attest to that. I think yeah, consistency's been unreal the last little bit. But yeah, I think the way that she's playing, that um, it's, she's going to be a really big weapon for us. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty hard to replace, those type of players, I think. Um, yeah, probably almost impossible to replace those guys. But um, I think that with the, the squad that we've built, I think it'll allow, yeah, like you said, our younger guys to, to sort of step up. Like, I think Ella Haywood um, for spin, I think she's been unbelievable the last few years, the way that she's come on as, as a youngster. So it'll be exciting to sort of see what she can do. And I think in terms of um, leadership, I think so. She's still going to be around anyway, so I think she's still going to have a massive impact on the group. But um, yeah, with our internationals, we've got a, like, a lot of experience um, leading, leading teams. So, yeah, I don't think we'll, um, we'll struggle in that sense. But, yeah, we're, we're really going to miss those two. <laughs> I actually, I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I guess my prediction would be Hayley. But, um, yeah, I think I actually I've got nothing else for you there. I don't know. So, you obviously got that experience. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, like, like you said, they've both had international experience leading their teams, um, leading their countries, uh, sorry. But, yeah, I think either of, either of them would be comfortable doing that. And I think the way that Haley's been captaining the West Indies has been unbelievable. I think um, it would be pretty hard to go past her. It's been a really long time since we started playing with the Gates. How long did you to get back past it? Yeah, um, it's yeah, been a little over two years since I played Big Bash. So I'm um, excited to, to put on the red jumper again and, and hopefully, um, yeah, win a few games for us out there. But... Yeah, no, it's definitely been been hard watching the last couple of years, but no, I'm really excited. Have you had a certain hormone that pushed you out the water? <laughs> um, oh, I've been in his ear a little bit. Um, we'll sort of see how we go. It might be a bit of a floating role, but um, yeah, I'll keep pushing for that, I reckon. Your, your batting's been developing really well. Is that something you, you want to do? But a little bit higher, go a little bit further into the innings as opposed to just being a person? Yeah, I guess any, any batter would say they want to get pushed up the order a little bit. Um, but yeah, I guess it's all game dependent and wherever, wherever the team needs me, I'm happy to go. But um, yeah, I'll be keep, keep on pushing with Helmo, that's for sure. And just back on Hayley, can you give us a sense of what it's like to bowl <laughs> in the mix that she's in? Like, what, what, what was that feeling like at North Sydney, honestly? Can um, you give some detail into how difficult it was to execute plans and then change plans to try and contain them? Yeah, well, she made it nearly impossible for us to bowl to her. Um, yeah, she puts a lot of pressure on the bowler and um, yeah, make, make sure that if you miss, then it's probably going the distance. So um, it's yeah, certainly hard, and we all found it very difficult during those T20s to be able to contain her. And we obviously didn't do a very good job of it. But um, 
yeah, I think it's just really hard, hard as a bowler, yeah, knowing that if you miss by just a tiny little bit, that's yeah, she's she's going to punish it. But um, yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully she didn't use all those runs in the T20 series and she can save some for us. Playing on the stadium series, um, do you think that's the next step in the evolution of this game? Is playing in big stadiums and big crowds? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Um, playing at, a, at an iconic venue like the MCG is, is is pretty crazy. I think the last time. A lot of the, the girls here would have been playing there, would have been the World Cup final, which is which is incredible for, for women's cricket and having that many people there was was unbelievable. But um, yeah, no, we're super, super excited to be able to play at the MCG and I think um, to be able to get more fans into the stadiums and bring a bit more of the atmosphere into the game will be really exciting and, and hopefully we can do a little bit more of that in the future. What was it like to be involved with the, the launch then? Yeah, it was really exciting. Um, it's my first launch, um, but yeah, it was really cool. Um, a little bit messy, got, got a bit more paint on me than I thought uh, I might do, but yeah, really exciting and really excited to, to start the season off on Thursday. Richard said you're an Australian in brackets. <laughs> yeah. Those who don't know some of your backstory, can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, so I grew up in Ireland and um, moved to Australia in 2019 um, full time and uh, yeah, moved over to, to play cricket as a career essentially because we didn't have um, full time contracts in place back in Ireland um, and yeah I guess I kind of just went from there I got a contract with uh, Victoria and, and the Melbourne Stars and got my permanent residency uh, which means I can play as a local player um, and yeah then about this time last year I got a call or probably a few months later after Big Bash last year I got a call from the selectors saying um, you know I was, I was qualified and uh, they'd love to take me to India so it's been a crazy 12 months but um, it's been really cool. What's it like to be part of a setup that's so professional and some people think is the best competition in this, in this format in the world? Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I think the domestic system over here is, is very, very strong. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really exciting. And I guess you can see why Australia are producing so many um, dominant domestic cricketers and, and, and why there is so much depth in, in the Australian side. Have you played on the MCG? No, I haven't. I've been very lucky. I played at uh, the SCG, the GABA, and the WAC. I played a few big ones, but never the MCG. So I'm really keen to get out there. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um, it's a good question. Depends how many people are there, I suppose. So I think November 25th, if, if everyone wants to come down, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, look, really excited. I've obviously lived in uh, Victoria for, for a couple of years, so I know, you know how special the place is to, to all Victorians and Australians as well, I suppose. So um, yeah, really excited. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, not so much looking forward to bowling at North Sydney. Um, <laughs> Be lucky that um, played on a few bowler-friendly wickets, um, but yeah, North Sydney is a bit of a bowler's graveyard, so I'm not overly excited for that. But uh, in terms of the whole competition, I'm very excited to to play against the girls, and I think um, yeah, as, as Pez spoke about earlier, I think the teams are really evenly matched this year, more so than previous years. So I think it's going to be a really strong competition. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to bowling to her again, but um, yeah, she's, she's obviously in some, some good touch, but um, yeah, the Melbourne Derby is, is always very exciting and i um, seen enough of her now that hopefully once we get to those uh, analysis meetings, um, yeah, I can put some good plans in place. Yeah, I think so. I believe she'll be, she'll be there, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, look, Meg adds so much to the group on and, and off the field with her experience and um, it's great to see her back. She's, she's put in some really strong performances already for, for Victoria um, and yeah, so keen to have her back in the green. Yeah, I, de I definitely do. Um, we have a lot of depth, I think, which is really good and some really exciting um, young talent coming through, the likes of Reese McKenna, Tess Flintoff, even Belsie's Annabelle Sutherland's still really young. Um, and I think obviously the addition of Meg as well is, is massive for us and uh, we take a lot of confidence from that. But I think we've got a really well balanced squad this year uh, and I, I really do believe that um, yeah, we could be up there come the end of the year. Oh, strike, yeah, strike is good. I think the Sixers are always a team to beat. It's hard to go past the Sixers. Um, yeah, striker sixes, I reckon, team to beat. Well done. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's exciting. This is a special time of year where we, we get to come together and you get to play some, yeah, a really high standard cricket. Obviously, you get internationals in. We got two new ones this year. So, um, yeah, the girls will come together today back in Adelaide and, and get to know everyone. And then um, 
yeah, then again tomorrow, but hit the ground running Saturday. So it all happens pretty quickly. And um, yeah, it's all about coming together and getting to know each other and, and really trusting each other's game. Are you looking forward to meeting your new teammates in Danny and Georgia for the first time? Yeah, it's exciting. Obviously heard really good reviews about him. And obviously Luke, Luke uh, gets people in that are, are really good humans as well. So yeah, I'm excited to, to get to know them and, and learn off them as well. Obviously they're, they're both world-class players and if I can pick something up from, from both of them, then um, yeah, it'll be something pretty special. Yeah, as soon as we heard the, the doco was being launched um, on Thursday night, we, we all were really excited. Obviously, we've heard really good reviews about it so far. I um, know Luke's, Luke's seen it and um, he got goosebumps and, and shed a little tear as well. So I know it's going to be something pretty special. And um, it's a credit to, to the media team at, at SACA that they were able to, to put it all together. And um, I know we're definitely all excited to go watch it. I think it's the um, the Adelaide Oval game against the Scorchers. Obviously, we always have some tough games against them, and to be able to do it at Adelaide Oval, hopefully in front of a really big crowd, it'll be um, something special. And, and if that is the case, then hopefully in future seasons to come, we get more and more games at Adelaide Oval. Yeah, everyone's excited for the WBBL. It's the, the best time of year. Everyone gets together in their own franchises, and it's just an exciting... Uh, franchise cricket that we get to play and yeah another another season rolls along but it just get, keeps getting bigger and better. Always a great time of year. How, many, how much do you enjoy playing in the WBBL? Oh, I think yeah as I said it's the best tournament um, in, in the world and to play to play with the Scorchers obviously at the Wacker as well all our home games are at the Wacker. Very excited and um, just like every other girl who plays in the WBBL it's the best time of year. Yeah, I think the, the biggest part for the Scorchers is we try to keep our core, core players close together and we have lots of domestic players that play pivotal roles for us in the Scorchers. So this year is no different and I think just having, having our captain back with us, Sophie Devine, I think is going to be pivotal for us both on and off the field. How are the Scorchers been able to retain Sophie Devine and sign Amy Jones? Um, how important will their international experience be for the group this season? Incredible. I think, yeah, as I said, that... We retain so far captain and she offers so much just not on the field but off the field and she's created this great culture at the Scorchers for the last few seasons and um, it's it's gaining traction and people want to be playing at the Scorchers because of, of what we do. Uh, we have plenty of fun on, on and off the field and that's that's due to Sophie in bringing that vibe and that energy to the Scorchers and having Amy Jones as well. She's going to add a lot of experience to this, to this lineup and I'm excited to see her whack a few and I don't have to bowl to her which is even better. Oh, I'm feeling fresh, I'm feeling ready to go. As I said, like the WBBL is the best time of year and when we get to put on that orange shirt, I think we just goes to a whole nother level. So very excited, I'm just happy to go and hopefully, you know, a few wickets for the Scorchers. And obviously you've had the Ashes experience over in England. How did you find that tour and what did you take out of the series? Yeah, I think it was a great tour for both teams and we learn a lot about ourselves as uh, from an Aussie perspective and we've come back and we've reflected really well and you know hopefully we, we go forward with some new plans and the way we want to play so it, it was a great tour it was a great exhibition of the women's game at the moment and yeah it was incredible to play at some amazing grounds over in England. Um, a big summer ahead for the Aussie girls including in Test in Perth how exciting is it to have the Test match at the WACA for the first time in 10 years? Very exciting I think everyone in WA is really looking forward to having like Test cricket back in Perth, especially for the women, but it's going to be a great series against South Africa and to finish on the test is going to be, it's going to add a lot more to the series than ever before. So very excited that we get to play at the WACA. And South Africa, what are you expecting from them as an opposition? They've had some, they have some of the world's world class players like Catherine. Yeah, I think they, they've played in our domestic comp in the Big Bash for many years. So we know them really well, but they've got some really good talent coming through. Uh, and, at South Africa. We've played them recently in the World Cup final and they just show that their younger players are stepping up to the plate and, and performing on the big stage. So uh, they're going to be a tough opposition, but hopefully, you know, we, we have our plans right and we'll just go about our business and focus on ourselves.